All right, I believe it is working. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. So I'm Jeff. Uh, who do we have here? It's called Christian. <laughs> Christian. Okay. Christian. My name's Ignacio. Ignacio. Okay. And uh, yeah. So what? I guess I'll let you guys take turns. I don't know if you. You said you were just talking about this. I don't know if that means you have different opinions and you were discussing your different opinions or if you have the same, but uh, so Christian, what do you think happens? I already gave you the question. What do you think happens after this life? I feel, I think that when we die, we just go back to where we were before we were born to a, a energy state that we once were. Okay. Because I think that everything is just an energy wave. Yeah. yeah. That's what I think about. Okay. Do you, um, is that what you hope? Like, do you, do you <laughs> wish there was more to life than just... Basically, it's, it's basically saying you die, and would you say you don't have a personality? Like, you don't really have a spirit or a soul? Or just, I, I get the energy, like our soul is energy, but... We probably do go somewhere, but... The thing is, is it going to be me, you know? Am that's I gonna that's be the question, yeah. Because yeah. if it's just energy, like like a lot of people say, well, it's like I'm like a river and I'm going to flow into the sea. Mm -hmm. And then and then we lose our identity as the river, right? Yeah. Um, so I would say it's basically kind of a nice way of saying you cease to exist. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's like the you ceases to exist. The energy is still there, but... Would you, would you agree with that or, or not? So like we all go back to the same river? Well, or the same, the same ocean? Um, yeah, I guess straight. I guess what I'm asking is, like, so you say you are you don't think that you'll have a consciousness or, like, you as an individual will cease to exist? Yeah, right? I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. How about you? So it's Christian and... Ignacio. Ignacio, Ignacio. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a crazy uh, story. Uh, don't do drugs. Okay. <laughs> mixed, I've mixed LSD and weed. Uh -huh. uh, and it was a really strong dose of LSD this time. And um, I think I died. Recently? And, uh, this was a couple of months ago. This was like in April or like May. <clears throat> um, I experienced what I what I completely felt like my body shutting down. I was like half asleep uh -huh. almost. And, and I kind of started to feel like really weird. I, I really felt like the blood like was like receding. Yeah. I couldn't feel like my fingertips or like my toes. It got really hard to breathe. <clears throat> And I, I just kind of let it happen because, like, for many years I've been struggling with like mental health. Yeah. And I, and it was just kind of like, I was just kind of like, if this is it, and I was kind of half asleep, and I just kind of let go really easily. And I had this really crazy moment where I, I felt like I was floating, and I looked back and I, I saw my body on my bed. As crazy as it sounds, whatever drugs, whatever <laughs> you want to make of it, I saw my body on my bed, and I definitely felt like I was floating. And I had complete. I'd come to the acceptance that I had died, and there's this like overwhelming feeling of like you become a part of this like love and acceptance. There's like this this huge thing, and, and people have said that like people express the thing of like everything is connected or like we're all one, and and it's like you don't really get it until you're there. Yeah. And like. <clears throat> The best way I can describe what it was like is like imagine if you could like stand in the internet and you could see like everything, uh -huh. everywhere you look. That's the best way I could put it. Okay. And, it and, was just, and take it all in at the same time. Yeah, so yeah. Like you felt everything and you come to the realization that like all the problems that we have here like it mean nothing because like whatever comes next is so is so much more like positive and it's so radiant in like love and like understanding and it was just nuts like you come to the reason nothing here like matters and it was so weird but like as I've explained to him a couple times like I felt like I had died but I hadn't lived I hadn't been like fulfilled I felt like I was like missing I felt like I wasn't supposed to be there yet and something talked to me there was a voice there that was like well, what do you want and I ultimately said I, I would like to come back and I awoke a couple hour later, uh, hours later, it was like four in the morning and I was just like in this complete shock. I was just like, whoa. Yeah. And it's like, whatever it was, whether it was the drugs, whether it was real, whether it was whatever, like, 
I feel like I now, I feel better about living. Like, I feel less anxiety. I feel like my depression is slowly, like, coming down. Like, I feel like I have to, like, find a purpose here. Whereas yeah. before, I just felt like I was so ready to just, like, die. Like, that's the easiest way yeah. I can put it. I was Let just like, go. whenever it happens, I'm like, please. I, I used to wish for years that I could just fall asleep and not wake up. Wow. And, like, it finally happened. And I realized that I wasn't satisfied. I realized that I had, like, more to do or, like, I just wasn't fulfilled. And I got the opportunity to come back. And now I feel like I have to put in effort. Yeah. And so it's it's been it's been a journey. Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> and so were you were you just kind of relating that experience? Yeah, in a way. And then, like... Had you heard this before? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we're both, like... We're just looking into like people and their stories uh, when they do DMT. I don't know if you've heard of that. No. So it's like supposed to be the most powerful hallucinogen like ever. It's a really short 15 minute experience. Uh huh. But people say they come back with like pretty much ex- like things that I've explained. Yeah. In a way. Uh, but like so much more profound. Like it's helped addicts quit their drugs. It's helped people with like PTSD because they come back with like a relief sense of like everything is okay and like whatever comes next is ultimately like just fine and yeah it's so weird and so a lot of these stories of, of people who use this drug who take it uh have a lot of similarity to people with uh near-death experience stories uh-huh. a lot of what both of these people say they see and they feel uh just correlate and like it's just a, it's just kind of weird and we just like discussing it like it's just yeah. crazy like people say they go to these other realms where like the physical world doesn't exist and it's just everything is just energy and like I've kind of felt do you like that. do you continue to do hallucinogenic drugs if you don't I mind have, my no, asking yeah, absolutely. like do you yeah, feel yeah. like you need to do that in order to like say recreate this experience or is it mm-hmm. just that it changed your life and you're mm-hmm. you don't need it anymore yeah so I, I if I ever took hallucinogenic I took a couple like before that one time it was just like it was always like to like heal something in me or like deal with something internally i feel like very it's never like for me like for fun or like to party it was always yeah. something like i had to deal with something you're searching internally. for something yeah right? yeah i had to yeah. like fix something or like deal with something turmoil trauma whatever it might be yeah so um yeah since that experience i haven't and uh i think if i did again it'd be like a micro dose which is like you just take a little bit and you're just kind of there yeah. just, you know just kind of like a nice little feeling during the day whatever like it wouldn't be something to potentially induce what happened the last time but um i'm very curious about dmt but uh, yeah. i'll do research before i like to say yeah, yeah you know, i recommend whatever. you know like, what you're doing yeah yeah definitely i i want to i want to i want to find out more about where you guys how you've arrived at you know your but i want to share like three brief experiences um that have to do with what you're talking about one is i got mugged and beat up by three guys or four around me and I had an experience of coming out of my body and looking down on my body and seeing myself getting beat up I was down on the ground and they're kicking me and punching me and and uh so you don't have to do drugs to experience no no I'm sure not definitely (laughs) not and another one is um I was cutting at the top of a tree down so I'm up on a ladder with a chainsaw and it was supposed to fall this way but at the last second when it was going to fall a big gust of wind came and pushed it and or wait, it went against the building and then it came back towards me. And as it's coming back towards me, I'm thinking my life is over, this is it. And I had this huge feeling of peace and calm, like, okay, that was quick and it's done. And I have no more responsibilities because I had, you know, I was running a, a youth center and I had all these responsibilities at the time. And it was just like, I can accept that because God, you're in, for me, it was like, God, you're in charge. You know what you're doing. And if this is the end of my life, I accept it, you know? And so this huge feeling of, of peace came over me that makes me think of what you were feeling. So again, don't need drugs for it. (laughs) And then the last one, um, I've experienced that sense of peace as far as like, I I went on a, a hiking trip a week-long hiking trip in Colorado where we're just living out of our backpacks and rising with the sun and going to sleep with the sun we didn't have fires or anything it was just and just kind of separating ourselves from all the clutter and all the worries and the news and 
coffee probably was a big one. I was, you know, not drinking coffee all that whole time. And um, I'll never forget how peaceful I felt for like a couple weeks after that. Just like different things would come up and it'd be just whatever, you know. I just, I felt like, I almost felt like I was on drugs. You know, like, yeah, like, I guess I, you know, when you go to a mountaintop, you see how small your life is compared to the rest of the world. And, you know, and then, and then where we were, well, like we could kind of, you felt like you were almost, when you sleep at, we'd sleep out at night and just look up into the stars and we felt like we were part of the, the, the Milky Way. Like we're not looking at the Milky Way, we're in it and see all these shooting stars. And just to know how big this universe is and how small we are gives you a sense of peace. Like, why fight it? It's so huge, you know? So anyway, that's... Um, so Christian, how... Uh, have you always believed that? Or was there a certain point where... Um, I do hear the whole idea... I'm guessing that you've heard, you know, in science it says energy can't be created or destroyed, it just changes forms, and so I heard a little bit of that mm -hmm. in what you were saying, but um, it's, would you would you say you don't believe in a higher power or creator or a god of any sort? I'm not talking about necessarily a I feel like part Christian of me, god. Part of me wants to believe that there's something else out there, but at the same time, I'll never know, so. Yeah. You don't Probably feel like, not. like, uh, do you feel like you've, say you, how, how can you know you'll never know? <laughs> how can you be sure? Are you pretty sure about that? Like you're young, you know? <laughs> yeah, but. Do you, do you have a lot of people in your life that feel like they do know? No? No. So. Okay. Because I feel like if I still existed before, uh -huh. I would know. Okay. You you know? That's yeah. the thing. That's everybody, the thing. Does everybody forget where you come from or whatever? Yeah. So like, it wouldn't be me, you know, as a consciousness. Yeah. So I feel like. I almost feel like there's two. I'd just be. It'd just be my energy in a different state. Yeah. There's almost like two conclusions that can come from that. One is that the state that I, but what you're saying, the state that I was in before, that's what I'll return to. Mm -hmm. The other one is that I actually had a beginning. So the Bible says, just to you know, give you the Christian perspective, is that we're created in God's image, which means we're like God, but we're not completely like God. So, so just like an image in a mirror is not completely like us, it doesn't have three dimensions, it's, you know, it doesn't make noise. It, there's parts of us that are like God, but one part where we would be different from God is that we have a beginning and God does not, you know? And so, yeah. And so to say, um, you know, we're the creation and God's the creator. So we're very different, you know. The Bible says in the beginning God created. It's implying that God was always there, but that creation had a beginning, you know. Um, so, you know, so we could just conclude that, okay, I don't have any memories from before I was born. Therefore, maybe I didn't exist, you know. I mean, that could be another conclusion from that. Um, did, were you raised in a Christian or a, like a Catholic home or in a Catholic? Home. Catholic. Yeah. Do you feel like? Well, how about you? Yeah, same. Yeah. But it's kind of like shifted. It was more like with my dad. He moved to Mexico a couple years back, and like since he left, like it's just been me and my mom. We just kind of been like, just kind of like Catholic. Yeah. Catholic. <laughs> we go. We go to the, uh, the you know, like uh, the events, weddings, uh, weddings, funerals, Christmas, yeah. Easter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we don't. Yeah, the events. Don't go over and above the Call of Duty. <laughs> not every Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Definitely not. And, you know, what What someone could conclude from that when, when you come across people who half-heartedly believe, it's kind of like they're going through the motions. You kind of see through that and you think, you know what, they're just going through the motions. Yeah. They don't really believe. You yeah. Know? And that's I, why I asked you if you have anyone that really believes, you know, and it sounds like, yeah, like you said, no, you know. Not really. Yeah. And, I mean, there's social pressure. Uh, to, you know, in, in a Catholic household to go. Um, most people that I talk to, you know, it's they have to come to a point where, you know, like usually when they leave home, 
well now now maybe I you know if they if they were always going with their family and then they get to a point um, where they're moving out of the house going to college whatever then they have to decide okay is this family faith is it now mine you know and have to take ownership of it or or am I just gonna let it slide most a lot of people don't even think about it they just kind of let it slide without even thinking about it you know so so you say you want to believe how come because I I want to I want to be somewhere else having a good time (laughs) (laughs) so you like life you enjoy life I want to experience something else yeah what if it's a a reality in another form yeah I get to experience what what do you think it would take to believe say that there is another dimension another another life Like an experience. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. A face in the sky. <laughs> well, know. well, you might have an experience of getting mugged or uh, a, a near-death experience. Or <laughs> I so. had a near-death experience this one time when I was little. Oh, uh, daycare. We were playing around with the rug. It was a foldable one. The one you could uh, roll over like a burrito. Yeah. And I was in the middle. I told uh, my friends, I was like, oh, roll me up, roll me up. They roll me up. I'm in the middle, and I'm just and they're so tight. Yeah. Away from the an air hole. Oh yeah. And I was there for a while. They were on top of it. I'm like, you know what? If this is it. This is it. I just That's scary. I'm on like, right this. Really? No. I never told you. I thought I did. That's crazy. Are you guys related, brothers or something? No. No. We've known each other a long time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my that's my worst nightmare is uh, like I get claustrophobic, you know, yeah. like to be, yeah, in a tight, confined space. It was pretty scary. Yeah. So, um, do you feel like, so would you say you've basically rejected the Catholic religion you've grown up in? Mm, I didn't really reject it, I just let it slip away from my yeah. life. How about you? Uh, yeah, my dad was uh, pretty strict on the church every Sunday, and I used to follow along pretty, like, to yeah. the church or whatever. Um, I used to serve, I used to give communion, uh, I used to help with CCD classes on Sunday, yeah. all works, yeah. Um, I slipped out of it, I started, like, all the holes you kind of poke into it sometimes, you just kind of, like, you just don't get it, and then one of my friends, uh, she was really devoted to her religion as well and she was like we were really young we were freshmen in high school and she was raped and that kind of like really shattered everything for me I, I just uh. couldn't understand like someone who was so devoted like more devoted than I was yeah. and, and, and um, I don't know it just shattered it for me and I just kind of lost it slowly and I would just go to like keep up appearances for my dad and did I it felt shatter, bad did it shatter it for her? Uh, yeah, I don't think she's a religious person anymore. Was she Catholic or? Uh, I believe she was. She went to Christian, Christian church. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. I don't know. I, whatever it was, I, I just couldn't fathom that. I, you know. I yeah. Couldn't, whatever. And um, I kept up appearances for my dad, and I felt bad. But I eventually did stop like serving because I, I used the excuse that I was like busy with school. Yeah. Uh, but I did feel bad that I was going and like not actually into it. And eventually he left, like, shortly after. So, like, it was just me and my mom. We only went a couple of times. And then I feel like she's slowly uh, come to the idea that I'm my own person. Yeah. 21 now. And she's slowly, like, you know, being okay with me, being my own person. She understands that, like, yeah, I definitely rejected the yeah. church. And, like, I have, my boss is pretty, uh, not pretty, she's very Catholic. Uh-huh. Uh, I think she spends just a little more time with her church than she does with her business, and it definitely shows, but it's whatever, it's not my problem. Um, that means she goes every day or something? Or? Um, I don't know what the best way to put it is. I just think she, her, fo- her focus is more in a different, in where it shouldn't be. I yeah. think her business could use improvements in a lot of, but that's whatever, neither here nor there. Right. Um, she's very pushy on it to where I, I kind of want to be like, we're in the workspace. And it's weird because we have this weird, her and my mom have a weird, like, friendship outside of work. And so it's kind of this weird thing, boundaries-wise. And I just kind of sometimes want to be like, we're in the workspace. Like, if you could just please, like, she doesn't have conversations with people. She talks, 
and you're supposed to listen. Oh, okay. So it's like it's not. There's no point in like yeah. dealing with any of that. And I just kind of like I just nod my head and be like, yeah, whatever. Like yeah, it's, you do what you want to do. At the end of the day, I'm a huge believer in like you do what you want to do. Yeah, I and mean, you should just like. And that's what I've discovered yeah. with these conversations is, you know, when it comes down to it, like, like so I'm a Christian and I would love for everyone else to be a Christian. You know, I'm I'm not shy about that, but at the same time everyone's got to make their own decision and so I feel like uh, what I can do as a Christian is just try to find out if people have a an understanding of Christianity and try to explain it a little better you know so for example would you guys so by the way I'm not Catholic I'm you know so I go to a I go to New Life I don't know if you've heard of that it's New Life Is that like- so there, we have a bunch of different locations around here but uh, anyway so it's like I'm not I, I'm, I, I want to be quick to say I'm not a Mormon or a Jehovah's Witness, <laughs> um, but because uh, they can be very, very pushy. But anyway, um, would you do you feel like you have so so if you've either rejected or neglected, you know, the Catholic faith, do you feel like you have an understanding enough of it to fairly reject it or neglect it? See what I'm saying? Like. You know, like, you can neglect someone and have good reasons why, and I respect that, but if you don't know quite why, or even what it is that they teach or preach, or what they're about, officially, we all know, like, we all know people that maybe are hypocrites in in the church, so, but we don't necessarily get the real picture of what the church is about from a a hypocrite, because by definition, they don't believe, you know, they're not living out you can tell they don't believe because they're not living it out, right? So, so do you feel like, you know, like in the, in the on the Christian side, you know, we say, well, it's called the gospel, and and actually, and and what I'm talking about is like a summary of what is the core teaching of the Bible, right? And I think Catholics would agree with that too. So, would what would you say is the like the gospel, you know, or the the core teachings, the the main message of of the Bible or the Catholic Church, you know? Like, what do I think, like, people are supposed to take away from it? Yeah, or like, what, it? yeah. Okay. Um, I think I, I, it's so weird because it's supposed to be presented, like, I guess religion in general, maybe, or, like, I guess Christianity and maybe Catholicism have this in common, that maybe it's supposed to be, like, open and accepting and, like, loving because it's just God who loves you, right? But then it's, like, unfortunately, you see like, I don't know, I'm sure maybe it's not the same for everybody, but there's people out there who are like, you can't have gay people here, you can't have X, Y, Z, because whatever, and if you're trans, you don't belong, and they put all these, like, stipulations, and God doesn't love you, and you're just kind of like, are you God? Do you decide that? Like, if your God is supposed to love everybody, did your God not make this person gay? Did your God not make this person trans? Like, you see a lot of that, and, and I understand that maybe it's not everybody, maybe not every Christian feels that way, maybe not mm-hmm. every Catholic feels that way, but, like, you see so much of that, that you just kind of, like, why? Like, for what? Like, it's so, they, so it's kind of, like, exclusionary? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, again, I'm not saying it's everybody, you know, but, like, it's there, and, I, and I've seen, like, I've seen the weird, like, extreme sides yeah. like, that my boss might go to, like, The other day she was saying she was doing a a fasting of two days Uh as an offering to God. And, like, that's fine. I'm not going to, like, sit there and be like, well, that's kind of dumb. But, like, (laughs) um, I was just, like, in my head I was like, this God who loves you and who created you and who put you on this earth with food (laughs) is is supposed to be happy that you're starving yourself? Like, what does your God get out of it? I was like, you believe that? that, That's fine. You do you. But, like, to me that was just more, like, I guess fuel to, like, just push myself away and it's like she's not the only one i'm sure she's got her group of other followers who are oh sure doing yeah, yeah she's not things. doing that all alone and, yeah, yeah so it's just it's a little head scratching and i'm just kind of like again you know if you want to do that you go ahead and do that but like to me it was just more like a little more distance to put between yeah. and, like all of that so so basically a god of love and 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 uh, acceptance would be the basic message of of the, like the gospel. I would hope so. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what people should have gotten out of it. Yeah, I don't know where they started putting all, all of these buts and ifs and when right. and yeah. he said and she whatever. 
so stipulations yeah. on it. Yeah. How about you? What do you think is the basic message of the Bible or the Catholic Church? By the way, when I say so, so people say if you're Catholic or you could be Christian, right? Mm -hmm. But really, Christian means Christ's ones or his followers, right? So Catholics would be Christians too. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? If they're Christ followers. So it's kind of like a big umbrella, and underneath it is Catholicism, and then other, you know, like uh, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, and the main. Um, I'm actually a high school history teacher, so I, I I won't go crazy on this. But you've heard of the Protestant Reformation? No. No. Uh, I've heard it, but I've no idea what it is. But okay. I know I've heard it. So Protest. I'm a Protestant. I'm not. A, so it's, you got Catholics and you got Protestants, right? And then out in Eastern Europe, you've seen those churches that have the the weird. There's actually a few around here because they're from Eastern Europe. The uh, the steeple that's real wide and you know. Anyway, that's called Orthodox. Oh, okay, yeah. But just to talk about Catholic and Protestant, everyone was Catholic in Europe until a guy named Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King. He's he's actually named after Martin Luther. Martin Luther was a Catholic priest who protested, that's why they're called Protestants, protested the Catholic Church for not following the Bible. So they had, over their hundreds of years of history, had developed some traditions and some teachings that were not, you know, based on the Bible. And one of them was that um, you kind of have to pay your way to heaven, either through what's called indulgences, or, or you have to, like, get people out of purgatory by paying indulgences. So get, you know, all this guilt trip of like trying to get your deceased relatives, your dear mother out of purgatory. Um, so they were doing that. And, uh, and just also in general saying that you have to somehow pay, like your good will outweigh your bad and that's what gets you into heaven, right? Um, and so, so, uh, so it came down to an issue of is what the church teaches the authority we have to follow or is it the Bible itself our final authority? And so I, as a Protestant, would say, I follow the Bible, I respect the church teachings, whether it's a Protestant church or a Catholic church, but I always check it with the Bible. So if the, if the church is teaching something that's contrary to the Bible, I would say, I don't believe in that, you know? Um, so, so there's a lot of traditions, you know? That, uh, so there's a lot of really good traditions that remind us of different things and I'm all for it unless it's really absolutely contrary to the Bible. So, um, so just, it's just a, a question. I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, Catholic, you should not eat meat on Fridays, right? Well, that, that's not really in the Bible. It was started <laughs> in the Middle Ages as a way to try to help people to remember that Jesus died for you on a Friday. So to that extent, I would say... I'm all for it, you know, but people kind of take that and then they think, oh, if I don't eat it on Friday, then I can go to heaven. And it's like, no, that's not the purpose of it. The purpose is to remind you of something else, you know, that, so, you know, so people can get misled by all the symbolism and traditions and, um, and so, so as, a, as Protestants in general, and Protestants do this too, they have their own traditions and their churches have been around for hundreds of years now too. I grew up in a Lutheran church, and it's kind of like a Catholic church, you know. Um, so all of this develops over time, you know. And so, so I think it's really important to say, okay, let's get back to the Bible, get back before all the traditions, and see what it says. Which means we got to read it, and so, you know, or and we we teach it in church, you know. So all that to say, um, yeah. So what do you, so what do you think is the I don't, want to, I don't want to just say the Catholic view, but we'll say the Christian view of what, what is uh, Christianity about. I, mean, I, would, I would guess the same thing of what he said, but I'm going to be honest, I haven't really read the Bible. Yeah. It's never really interested me. Yeah. So, uh, but you've heard of, like, did you go to, uh, either of you go to confirmation? And, yeah, you know, I, I went to confirmation. I did my first Catechism, I want to say. That's Commun all I did. My oh, first. that's like when you're first grade, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, and so you didn't do the thing where, like, when you're 13, 14? By the time I was already, I was already gone. Yeah. I slipped away. And so your your family wasn't real, uh, 
well, were really trying to get they you. They were to trying go. to get me to do my confirmation, but I was just like, nah, you're a rebel. I don't, really, yeah. <laughs> I don't really want to do it. Well, Martin Luther was a rebel too, so. <laughs> um, so, okay, so uh, you know, I, I don't, I guess I want to say. I would love to tell you kind of like a nutshell version of what it's about, um, if you don't mind. But I, I don't want to talk too much. So, <laughs> so, a, so the I, I'll try to I'll try to uh, like make it. So, the Bible you you really have to understand that from the very beginning, God is a living being that has decisions, you know, makes decisions and and made us for a purpose and. Um, so the whole thing about uh, Adam and Eve, you know, God gave them a rule. Don't eat from that one tree. You've heard of that, right? The forbidden fruit. And they were walking and talking with God, the Bible says, in the cool of the evening. Kind of like, I don't want to say they were buddies with God, but at least they had a relationship, you know, a, a two-way relationship with God. So God said to Adam, don't eat from that tree. Eve breaks the rule, gets Adam to do it, and immediately what they do is they go and hide. Why did they hide? Well, the Bible says they, they realized they were naked. Okay, they didn't have any clothes on, but also they were naked spiritually. Like It's like, oh, we have disobeyed God, and he knows. Let's get out of here. And so their relationship with God, where they were walking and talking with him, was destroyed. It was like they're running from God. And so, so the, the lesson from that is, when we obey God and don't treat God like he's in charge, and if, if you think about it, it only makes sense. If he made us, he knows what's right for us. He should be in charge. But, but uh, Satan said, no, if you eat this, you can be like God yourselves. In other words, you can be in charge, you know? And so they, their relationship was destroyed. And so, the re so if you, you want to understand the rest of the Bible, it's about God working things out so that we could get back into a right relationship with him where he's God and we're not where we're respecting his rule and following him but of our own you know will uh, doing it because we want to and so that you've got this whole uh, so then humanity just goes totally away from God so much that God is just like it's so bad I need to destroy it and start over again. That's cool. The flood. Oh. Huh? Like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So he does. He's you know, it's so bad that everyone so but he saves a few people out of there and they start back and they do the same thing. They get back into sin and except there's some people who do follow God and God chooses to kind of work with them as an example to the rest of humanity. This is what will happen to the people who follow me. So this would be the people of Israel, you know, the Jewish people. And, uh, and so, and also God is developing, um, like revealing more and more of who he is so that when we do have a relationship with him, we can look back in history and say, oh, this is how God is. This is what he's like. So everything in the Bible is working towards this coming Messiah, the Savior who's going to, you know, like bring us back to a right relationship with God. When people are, God, in the meantime, God gives the people the, the Ten Commandments. So, and even before that, it says he put his law in our hearts so we all have a conscience. You know, that was the result of eating that fruit is like, the Bible says their eyes were open and they knew good from evil. And so we all know right from wrong, you know, instinctively, or I, I don't even want to say instinctively, the Bible says it's like God put his law in our hearts. So we know right from wrong, and we also know we don't always do the right thing or we often do the wrong thing. See what I'm saying? And so in a way, each of us is kind of like biting from that apple ourselves. Every time we do what we know we shouldn't do, we're saying, God, forget your rules. I'm going to do my own thing, even if we're not even thinking about God. You know, we get in the habit of just kind of leaving God out of everything. And so it's all about God pursuing us, wanting a relationship with us, and how in the world would a spiritual being who's made everything communicate with us little ants on the ground? Well, God becomes an ant himself. 
uh, in the person of Jesus. He takes a human form and he teaches us and he shows us by example how to live the perfect life, which none of us could do, but he does. He lives the perfect life. You can read about Jesus' life in the Bible and, you know, the Bible says he, he was without sin. Closest thing he did, you know, that a lot of people point to as sin is they say, well, he, he cleared the temple, you know, he went in there and he, he was mad that people were like, taking it you know swindling each other and taking advantage of each other and doing it all in God's name and he cleared the temple there's anger that's sinful you know um, but you know even that it was like a holy righteous anger it was like he was protecting or defending God's honor you know so anyway Jesus goes to the cross and the Bible says he took our sins for us so uh, he, he took our the punishment for us, the consequences of our sin for us. So, like, when you were saying, um, you know, God is, is love, uh, it is true, like, love is one of the attributes of God. But God also is just. So, I'm pretty sure you'd say justice is a good thing, right? Yeah. So, like, when a criminal gets what they deserve, that's justice, right? And we love justice. We see it on TV all the time. We're Sometimes we root for the criminal, but that's just because they portray him as a victim. But, uh, you know, we want justice. Well, God is good, and so therefore he's loving, but he's also good, and therefore he loves justice. So if on the final day when, you know, our lives are being evaluated, there's a judgment day, if we, um, if we're found, I mean, we all... Just to give you an example of like that we're sinners, like, would you say you've told any lies in your life? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Have you ever taken anything that didn't belong to you? Uh, when I was a little kid, but I definitely I have a moral code. I don't steal. All right, but you when you did it and as a little kid, you knew it was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you ever um, like uh, the Bible says you shall not commit murder, but then but then Jesus said yeah murder is wrong. But even if you take, if you speak of your brother, and I think he was talking about anyone, in anger and call him a fool, you're in danger of the fire of hell. Something you've ever done? Called anyone a bad name? Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, he said, you know, adultery is wrong. Sex outside of marriage is wrong. But even if you look, in order to lust after someone, you're committing adultery in your mind or in your heart. You know. So in other words, we do things all the time that are the same as. Adam eating that apple. We know it's wrong, but we do it anyway. Okay? So we'd be guilty. If God was to be totally loving with us, well, he would just say, okay, boys will be boys. You come on into heaven with me. I want this relationship. Right? But if God loves, if God is perfect, he would have perfect love, but he would also have perfect justice. Right? So perfect justice means, well, there must be a consequence or a punishment yeah. for your sin. So what you've done, there has to be a punishment given out for that. You know, you can't, it's not just like a free pass, you know. And if we were in a, in a courtroom, a human courtroom, and someone like had killed an old lady, let's say it was our grandma, and the, and the murderer is like, judge, I'm really, really sorry, I shouldn't have done that. You know, it'd be like, okay, at least he's sorry, but he still killed my grandma, you know. If the judge said, okay, I see you're sorry, you're free to go, we would say that's not justice. See what I'm saying? Um, so justice must be, there must be a penalty for justice. It's not just a matter of being sorry for what we did. So, so what the Bible says is that God, in, in his love for justice and in his role as the judge, said, you are condemned. In other words, you are found guilty, and there must be a punishment for that. The punishment is hell. It's, it's, you're separated from me forever. There will be punishment forever. Just because what you've done is so, uh, so offensive to me. Um, which is, which, which, that's the part of Christianity that's like the bad news, and that's what you're saying you don't like. You know, it's like, how can no, God... No, I, I think, I appreciate the justice part. Like, I feel like things are so tough, and I feel like just have to not be like a dig like yeah. I feel like but then I feel like there's some like maybe small little like micro rules that I don't like I feel like whatever God or gods whatever entity exists that like put us here or whatever you might have it like uh -huh. 
I feel like they're just not worried about like small shit. Like obviously, like don't kill, don't steal. Yeah. Like I have a moral code. I try to stick to it. I, I'm not perfect, but like. Well, here's the thing with um with the small things mm-hmm. is that when God looks at us, He's not like a lot of times we. And, and I'm just I'm not saying you guys have to agree with me, but I'm just saying this is basically how the Bible portrays God. Is that a lot of times when humans on our own, when we look at God, we think, well, how can God be this way? You know, people shouldn't act like that. But God's not a person, right? So if we thought God was worrying about the details of our lives, that would be, and and we think it's bad, that would be like saying God is like this, um, you know, this miserly guy who has nothing better to do all day than just take notes and find out what we're doing wrong, see? And that would be a lot of work and who wants to like live their life that way right and that's pathetic if someone lived that way that'd be pathetic you know to point out all the errors in people's lives so but God being the God of the universe knowing everything without any effort whatsoever looks at me and looks at you and and sees it all and doesn't go out of his way to see it all it's just like he can take it all in and see it all and it can't be avoided if that makes sense. So it's very different than viewing it from a person's personal point of view. And so God would see all that, and he loves justice, says there must be a punishment for it, and the punishment is hell, or because he loves us, takes human form in the form of his son Jesus, takes our punishment for us, and then, and so that's showing perfect love because Jesus, you know, the Bible talks about this perfect love between the Father and the Son, and there's, um, it's kind of, I mean, I have to go into a lot of detail about the Trinity, I don't know if you've heard, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you know, that whole thing. But anyway, it's like this perfect relationship that he has, and he turns his back on his own Son, Jesus, on the cross, allows him to die in our place, and so he's, he's, because love involves sacrifice. You know, you can't just love something and then never do anything for it. I mean, love means got to take action you know and so God does that he takes action and he loves us through Jesus but he also loves justice that's why Jesus suffers and dies and so in Jesus at the cross you see God's perfect love and his perfect justice at the same time and all other religions basically say well you can kind of do some bad things but then you should do some religious things to make up for it you know or the, the good, your good must outweigh your bad. And so God's kind of like compromising. He's kind of loving, but he also has these requirements. And so he's kind of just. Christianity says, no, he's perfect in every way. And so I became, I, I, you know, I don't know if you've ever heard this term, born again. You heard that before? Yeah. I mean, it's not a Catholic term, but it is a Bible term. Jesus said, you must be born again. So, you know. Uh, so some people can kind of use that out of context and it might have a lot of different meanings but for me it was more like God in the same way that um, I was born once physically like I didn't bring myself into this world you know all of a sudden and it wasn't even all of a sudden I just kind of realized who I am and you know what I'm doing uh, the Bible says our spirit is is dead but it comes to life when we're born again so the more we hear about Jesus and God and what he's done in our lives we, we, we start to believe and he changes us from the inside out and so we have a you know and, and for a lot of people like myself it's kind of a dramatic experience when I was 17 um, I had a dramatic experience with that um, but basically what it means is you know like I can't save myself it's not like I suddenly became this wonderful person and it's like no Jesus died for me while I was still a sinner and that's what he, the Bible says for you you know it's like while you're still sinners, Christ died for you, you know, even before we could do anything about it. And, um, you know, uh, and then, and so some people say, well, does that mean that I could be a Christian and, you know, trust in Jesus, but then the rest of, you know, like, I don't know, maybe go to church for an hour a week and then the rest, live like hell the rest of the week, you know? The Bible says, no, we we're, we have a new spirit. We don't have the desire to do that. We want to do good. We want to do right. So it changes our desires. And so my relationship, you're getting back to relationship, my relationship with God is not one where I'm going around saying, God, you owe me, because look at, look at what a great person I am. 
you know, getting back to the uh, the friend that, you know, she was raped. I mean, the Bible doesn't, that's a horrible, horrible thing. I can't even imagine. But the Bible says, you know, it doesn't say if a person follows God, life will be perfect. But what it does say is that God will be there with you through this very imperfect life. And so, you know, I don't know if she was expecting, well, I, I followed all the rules. Why did this happen to me? Um, we just... It's more about relationship. God promises to be there with us, you know, through the difficult times. And uh, and so it's not necessarily, because I don't know, you've probably seen uh, on TV, there's a lot of preachers that say, oh, you'll be rich if you just give to our ministry. Have you seen that? Uh, that Joel Austin guy? Yeah. yeah. He, would be in, he would be one, probably. Oh, Private yeah, there's a bunch of them, <laughs> and and so that's kind of that's kind of like a you know another form of what you're talking about is like if I do good, why shouldn't God reward me, right? That's basically what they're preaching, and that's why it's just fucking scammers. So it's like, yeah, it's a whole I mean, other thing. So it's like yeah, and so yeah. And so if if that's our view of God, you know, like if life was perfect, if if all the people that you knew that were Christians that followed all the rules, if everything went perfect for them, then we would follow God for the wrong reasons be like I want my life to be perfect I want to be rich and be healthy yeah I'm going to follow God for that reason you know now I think God does bless us but it's not guaranteed you know I've experienced many blessings in my life but you know also a lot of difficulties so 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 I guess if I was to sum up everything I'm saying it's like we, because of our sin, we're not in a right relationship with God. And the whole thing about the gospel, it's got bad news and it's got good news. And the bad news is God will let us go our own way. And that will result in being separated from him for eternity, which the Bible calls hell, a horrible place. Or we can receive, kind of like a gift, what God has done for us already. You know, uh, Jesus, he, he, he died for us. He, he gave his life for us. He wants to you know, to live life with us, you know, and have a relationship with us. So I have an ongoing relationship with God. I can't say I can hear his voice, you know, like a, you know, like a, like audibly. I, I hear him speaking through, you know, when I read the Bible, I kind of, I, I, I know God is speaking there. I, it's kind of like a still, quiet voice in my heart that's not, it's hard to explain. It's just like reassuring? In, huh? It's just reassuring? Like you feel reassuring? Reassuring. I would call it like an inner confirmation of, of you know, and yeah, so it's it's hard to explain. I'm sure it's probably different for everyone, you know. I have talked to people that say they have heard God speak. And I've had dreams where I feel like God was speaking, but it's, at the same time it was a dream, so, yeah. So, yeah, so I, I, uh, I try not to talk so much, but it sounded like you guys didn't really have a handle on exactly what the gospel's about. So yeah, no, I hope this is, clears it up a little yeah. bit. Just, yeah, it was, yeah, instead, you know, just think not religion so much as relationship. Christianity is intended to be a relationship with our Creator, not necessarily a religion. Some parts of religion can be helpful towards that, but it's all about the relationship. So have I bothered you guys enough? <laughs> no, I, I was actually sure genuinely interested. Yeah. Well, let me ask yeah. you this. So I'm, um, I guess what you call a Bible-believing Christian. What, what can you think of? Any, you know, and I'm, I've heard it all because I get in these conversations all the time. Um, so you won't offend me with any question you ask me. And if I truly don't know the answer, I'll tell you I don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but do you, what would you ask? What is there anything you'd like to ask? You know, I know I caught you off guard, and it's not something you've been thinking about, but you know, uh, and I'll get, I'll share my card, and I'll have my number on there, and anytime you have a question, just text me or whatever. But yeah, so offhand, can you think of anything? Have you done drugs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a high schooler myself, yeah. and uh, I was not impressed. Um, let's see. I did drugs when I was a new Christian, and I guess I felt like I don't want to go the rest of my life. Like if someone asks me when I'm 
in my 50s, like you just asked me, have you done <laughs> drugs? I don't know. I guess I was thinking, I want to be someone who's been around the block a few times. So I kind of had that on my mind, you know? <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend it. I enjoy, you know, I, I still do drugs. I drink coffee, you know? That's, yeah, a, that's, that's a drug. And I feel like it makes me more alert and awake, yeah. you know? And uh, so I guess anything that distorts reality or makes me less... Uh, the Bible actually says, you know, do not be drunk with wine. And we read that to say, don't allow anything to um, distort your thinking. So it wouldn't just be wine, it would be all kind of alcoholic drinks and drugs. And the reason it gives is because we live in a spiritual realm and if we're not, if, if we're not like fully coherent, we're opening ourselves up when I say a spiritual realm, there's good and there's bad spirits all around us. There's, there's angels, there's demons, you know? I mean, I know it sounds paranoid and everything, but the Bible teaches this. There are demons that, that influence us. And so if we are letting down our guard, we're basically, and, that, and this is why I would be against um, people allowing themselves to be hypnotized or put in a trance or boss that she you know, does that. And huh? it was, my boss recently told me that she does that too and it was the most bizarre thing I'd ever heard. Yeah. Another one is um, meditation. So like when you're meditating, you're, you're, you're trying to empty your mind, totally clear your mind. Well, the question is, well, what's then, what then is going to fill it? And the Bible says there are spiritual forces who would be glad to, you know. Um, it does, there is such a thing as Christian meditating, meditation, but that's it says meditate on God's word. So in other words, read it and think it through and maybe maybe like read one passage over and over again and start to start to understand all the different ways that it, you know, implications it has in your life and so it's filling yourself with something, God's word, you know, the Bible rather than emptying yourself and exposing yourself to to other things. So so I, so it's it's all related to doing drugs too, I think. It's just yeah. Do we want to be let down our guard? And that's what drugs do to us, you know, I feel. So, I appreciate the question. Any others? Uh, feel free not to answer this because this might be maybe a little personal. Maybe a stance on abortion. Stance on abortion? Yeah. No um, judgment, just out of curiosity. Just yeah. I mean, I'm against it. Yeah. I'm for life. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do know is that there are uh, there are lists and lists of people who want to um, adopt, you know, that can't have kids. But even you know, if even if that wasn't true, uh, my stance on abortion would be the same as that on adoption or on, on murder. The thing that makes murder wrong is we are acting like we're God and you know taking a life, and only God. I mean, the Bible is full of instances where God takes a life but he's God you know we can't judge him like he's a person and so so um, you know to the only one that can decide when to begin life and when to end life should be God and so I would be against abortion so if I was a politician what would I do I'd have to I mean there are politicians especially here in Chicago that there absolutely would never get elected if they come out against abortion okay. and and so you'd almost have to say well I'm against it on a personal level but there's other it's not the only issue out there right. and uh, and so maybe I'm a part of a political party that's for it so you believe in a separation of church and state you believe that should be fine should yeah be, yeah, yeah. Um, but that that doesn't mean so just as a high school teacher, I mean that's that's not even in the Constitution. It's it's in Thomas Jefferson's writings, and it was like separation of the church from the state. So in other words, the state shouldn't have the right to meddle in the church's business. Um, so, but I am, you know, I, I definitely like I came to my relationship with Christ in a spiritual sense and through people who were. You know sharing the gospel with me and uh, it's not something that could ever be forced on anyone or 
or, or you know, you can't make a law about it. So, you know, just as much as I respect human dignity and humans to make their own decisions and their own will, you know, uh, I would be for, you know, like the state is, is separate for, from, from religion. It needs to be. Now, there are religions like Islam where they're trying to, they're saying you can't be part of the nation in certain countries unless you're professing allegiance to uh, Muhammad, you know, that sort of thing. So That's a good question. Anything else? So what I want to do is I'm going to turn the camera off and then if you feel like, like there's something you want to ask but off camera, we could do that too, so. <laughs> camera can be intimidating. I kind of forget it's there, usually. Yeah.